As the sun rises on another day in the Sky Lake Village, I think it's time we finally gave the residents somewhere to live. Welcome back to Settlers, the series where we build villages, towns and settlements across Conan Exiles. Today, as I mentioned in the last episode, we'll be giving the residents of Sky Lake Village a place to live by building houses for them. So, without further ado, let's get started. In this episode, I'll be building a total of 8 houses in the heart of the village, which will be the main residential hub of the settlement. Seeing as this video will basically consist of 8 separate builds, I won't be going too in depth on any of these designs like I would with a standard build video, otherwise this video would probably end up being about an hour long. However, you can of course see me constructing the homes in the footage. These homes will all be built with the material palette I chose in episode 1, consisting of Numidian and Frontier pieces with stable foundations. I'm aiming for an architectural style with these homes that is very much inspired by a sort of high fantasy version of medieval Germanic architecture, which has sort of been the theme of this village so far. Medieval European is probably one of my best styles, it's definitely one of the styles I'm most comfortable with, so it's a fairly easy method for me. The only issue with building multiple structures like this is trying to make sure not to just replicate the same design over and over again and to try to keep things fresh. Generally, for me at least, this was a little bit easier said than done. There was the obvious route of building some houses using wedges to create circular shapes, but after including a large central circle in one of the first houses I built, I decided not to rely too heavily on this, as it didn't really fit the style I wanted to cultivate. Having one or two houses like this wasn't too bad, but if say five or four of the eight houses had been circular tower-like designs, I think it breaks the style a bit too much and it then also causes those houses to look too similar, which creates the same problem I'm trying to avoid. However, that being said, if I divert too far away from the links that tie all these houses together, I'm going to end up breaking the overall theme and this village goes from a cohesive, clearly themed settlement to just a collection of builds bundled together. Striking the proper balance between making every house different whilst not making them so different that they break their theme is pretty difficult. There was a lot of trial and error in this process, and there was a fair few houses I built, wasn't happy with, and then tore down. However, I did keep a few things consistent between all the builds to ensure they were tied together by their design. These are elements that were already present in the general store and in Argonom Tavern, those being the wooden roof piece footers, sloping side transitions from Numidian into Frontier on the first floor, and Frontier wall caps atop the roof pieces. Having these consistent elements helps to tie everything together and keep things fairly clean. Whilst the previous technical concerns required a bit of preventative action to avoid any issues, there were one or two problems that required some somewhat reactive measures to tackle. Firstly, the terrain I chose to build these houses on could be a bit unforgiving at times. Whilst it's not a massively hilly area, it is indeed uneven with fairly inconsistent rises and falls between the bottom and the top of the incline that leads up to the pathway to the west. This offered some challenge with a fair few of the builds, especially one on the right hand side that I had to build fairly tall just to avoid a particularly troublesome outcrop of uneven land. This might not be too much of an issue for some, and in the end it's definitely something that I don't think takes away from the village, but it's one of those little things that just annoys me slightly, it's just a me thing. The other issue I encountered was working out how to path through the village. There are some pathways that already exist throughout this area, however they are not suited for the type of village I'd want to construct. Specifically, this area of the map has one or two long winding paths that would mean the overall area of the village would be spread quite wide without much density, which is not how I envisioned this village at all. I also could not use the paved walkway pieces, in fact I don't think I've ever used them, as due to the uneven nature of the ground, half of these walkways would just clip through the ground whilst the other half would jut out, creating a pretty ugly looking mess. Therefore I chose not to mark out any pathways, and instead I decided to try and use the layout of the homes to create paths. Creating streets with negative space is a bit harder than being able to create your own paths of course, but I did get some practice with this method in the Colonising Conan project, so I had faith that I could make this work. Eventually I managed to create a main street with two side streets, and though there are gaps between all of the houses where one or two people could easily walk through, the buildings are built in such a fashion that the density encourages use of the actual street, rather than weaving between buildings, which is exactly what I wanted. 
So with that, I built eight homes. Each house is designed in a different way for a different number of residents. The majority of the houses are designed to hold two or three residents, which plays well into bolstering the number of villagers living and working within this settlement. In total, these eight houses will hold between 18 and 20 villagers, which is pretty much the perfect amount for the residential area. Once the village is complete, of course, and with the various other stores, workshop and town utilities that I'll be building, I imagine we'll end up with something closer to... I'm ballparking it about 30 to 35 villagers. That's, of course, counting the store clerks that will live in their workplaces, the border dwellers of the village, and any other houses I might end up constructing further down the line where I find it appropriate. The houses are all numbered in Roman numerals, and they're decorated in a fairly rustic fashion as according to the theme and style I've already established in both the general store and in Argonom Tavern. I kept things fairly simple within the homes, most villagers wouldn't have access to blacksmith stations or furnaces, as those will be reserved for the workshops and stores I'll build in future episodes. One or two of the homes will have some very basic crafting equipment, mainly just to facilitate the hobbies of those that live within the home, but things are kept fairly simple within the houses I've created here. These homes have all been lit and decorated in a way that keeps things feeling cosy and homely. The most important thing for me whilst decorating was keeping the theme and atmosphere consistent throughout each home, and thusly keeping the theme consistent throughout the entire village. Skylake Village is a fairly straightforward settlement, its villagers are hardworking and reasonably prosperous, though that's not to say that some darker things don't lurk on the outer fringes of town, as you will see in some future episodes. The most important thing right now is that Argonom Tavern is no longer quiet and desolate. The villagers have somewhere to live, and now the staff of the tavern spend their nights serving drinks, cooking food and bundling rowdy patrons out the door. As the sun begins to set on another day in Skylake Village, the villagers are warm and comfortable in their beds, and planning begins on the next big endeavour. Now that the villagers have somewhere to live, they need a way to determine their future and debate the village edicts. Next time, we'll be building the town hall right at the centre of Skylake Village. If you enjoy my content, all the links to my Twitch, Twitter, Discord, Patreon, Host Havoc affiliate page, NordVPN discount and NordPass discount are available in the description below. However, of course, you can simply just leave a like, a comment or subscribe, any of those are very greatly appreciated. Patrons get a bunch of nice benefits including sneak peeks of videos, your name in every video, custom made wallpapers in 1080p and 4k resolutions, full size build blueprints, discord roles and more. On that note a massive thanks to our patrons Sadialot, Randar, Connor, Ivy, Torn, Coffeeman04 and Eagle Rose. As always, thanks for watching, take care and I'll see you soon.